Okay, welcome to uh, worship at uh, St. Andrew Presbyterian Church in Marin City, California. We are beginning this month in Black History Month, and this is a time that we will celebrate and remember because we are a church that is firmly, firmly planted in this historical tradition and yet being open and inclusive. Uh, so at the beginning of the service, we have this Black History moment where we first highlight a book, which is a 1619 project. If you've not got that and you want to hear the sweep of the controversial yet amazing book, please get that. It's on Amazon. We get nothing for it, but we simply want you to understand African-American history. And the person that we're lifting up this month, today, is Phyllis Wheatley. She is a woman who was an enslaved person. She actually was brought from Africa, and she is the first African-American woman poet that has been published in the, in the 1700s. Her work was incredibly important for the liberation of people. And anyone who calls themselves a modern day poetry poet or who is interested in poet, then please uh, read the poetry of Phyllis Wheatley. She was in fact someone who was born, not only who was enslaved, who was captured, and then wrote poet, poems about that and then fought, fought for freedom for everyone else. So as we begin to celebrate the freedom that in Jesus Christ we enjoy, and as we begin to celebrate the freedom of this day, we want to welcome you into worship. Today we have a special person who's helping us with communion, Margaret Milton, and we have a liturgist, which is uh, Dawn, who has come to help us also to worship God in this Sunday. So. Shall we begin and get ready for worship as we ready ourselves with uh, the heart song? Let's worship the Lord. God bless. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait. Wait in the water. Oh. 
that Moses led my God. He's going to trouble the water. See those children all dressed in green. God's going to trouble the water. What a wonderful start to our service. Thank you so much for that amazing heart song. So good morning. Uh, your response to the call to worship is pronounced ashe. You see at the bottom of your screen there. It's a Swahili word meaning the truth be told. So say it like you mean it. In a beginning before humans were formed and nature knew God's great presence, the spirit moved over the universe. Ashe. In quiet peace, God created humans, women and men, colorful, balanced, creatively diverse, and the beauty of God's love filled the earth. Come, let us worship the God together. Now for the invocation, let us pray. Spirit of abundance, God of grace, mother of hope, we pause now to remember those stories that are all around us, but so often passed over. Those stories that when told are shared because of what someone is, not who they are. This month in our nation's character is Black History Month. Help us to realize that Black history is all our histories. May the day come when these stories are so widely taught that no month need be separately divided. We know this day will not come until we as a people make different choices. We pray now for those new choices. May we come to see a day where the prison system becomes redemptive, not punitive. A day where the legal system learns to focus more squarely on the facts and not the colors of our skin. A day where our schools are as well-funded as the needs demand. May our role models be allowed to excel when they thrive and not be taken down for their rich heritage. Good morning, good morning, my friends. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Ashe, ashe, ashe. This morning, our song, This Little Light of Mine, comes it's a just a little different form you might hear it down in the fields of the cotton fields where slaves are picking and it's a blues turnaround and you'll catch on really easy <laughs> Everywhere I go, oh, 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Let us pray as we prepare our hearts for confession. Our call to confession is by Safia Fusha, whose doctor of ministry degree is in Afrocentric pastoring and preaching. We come today, O oh Lord, confessing like, confessing that like the disciples, we too have worked all night and have precious little to show for our efforts. Some of us have churched long and hard and still our neighbors see no good news in either the church or church people. We offer you both our days and our ways, direct our strength to the deep and difficult places where people need you most. Reorder our thoughts, ministries, and works of service so that they truly work for your glory, we pray. Amen. Now let us make our silent confessions to God. Let us be assured that we are forgiven. God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. Hearing their cry, loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful. Please join in the hymn of gratitude Lord Keep Me, verses one and two will appear on your screen. church building because we're trying out some new technology and we're online but we're so good that we have a visitor anyway in house i'm telling you talk about a magnet hallelujah so we have a visitor in house uh, and we have visitors online so we want to welcome you uh into this house and this space sing wildly and enjoy. We're, she, she's hearing, unfortunately, my voice, and uh, Margaret and I are doing a duet, uh, so we're just going to keep on singing if we can. It's a highway to heaven Oh, I can walk a faith But the pure in heart It's a Oh, I can walk up. 
together we are on that highway. We're gonna get there. <laughs> all right, let us all pause as we, as a community, enter into the call to prayer. Our call to prayer today is Lord, Lord, Open Unto Me by Howard Thurman. It's from his book, Meditations of the Heart. Lord, Lord, open unto me, open unto me, light for my darkness, open unto me, courage for my fear, open unto me, hope for my despair, open unto me, peace for my turmoil, open unto me, joy for my sorrow, open unto me, strength for my weakness. Open unto me wisdom for my confusion. Open unto me forgiveness for my sins. Open unto me tenderness for my toughness. Open unto me love for my hates. Open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Our scripture readings this morning are from the New International Version. Now hear the word of the Lord. <clears throat> First from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now John 8, 31 through 41. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, no. 
Today we look at two texts that are very important. This is the text and the time that we come for communion. And in this house, we do it once a month. And we do it because it is one of the sacraments of the church or one of the institutions of the church. It is very important. It is in every gospel. It is where Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. What an incredibly interesting thing. And it's an important thing that memory, what we remember and how we remember it, can determine two things. One, our faith, and two, our expectation. Now, faith is what we believe that if we, what we keep doing will happen. Expectation is what we think will happen if we don't do something. Faith is what we believe that when we do something, we can make happen. Expectation is what will happen if we don't do something. So then memory becomes important. Memory becomes a way in which we, as, as Bachoff Havel says, it was, if y'all remember, he's one of the people that Czechoslovakian freedom fighter. It says, memory is a point of which we fix our gaze as we move towards the future. So in other words, the horizons of our tomorrow are determined by what we thought our yesterdays were like. So memory is important, and up until the last 30 years, we thought that in order to serve, the, to, to study memory, we study what we remember. But because of PTSD, the studies in PTSD, and because of what's happening in Alzheimer's, we have now discovered the real important thing about memory is what we tend to forget. We used to think that forgetting was a passive thing. Now we find out that forgiveness can be a very act, excuse me, not forgiveness, but forgetting can be a very active thing. We can suppress memories because they're so painful. We can suppress memories because they've become harmful and our synapses somehow degrade over time. And we then hold on to something that is sweet in a way that we hold on to nothing else. So the issue in, in memory is not what we remember, but what we forget. We also know now, neurologically, that what we tend to remember, we control the narratives in our brain. So let's put it this way. We tend to remember things in the way that makes us live our lives today better. So what we remember may not have actually happened, but the way we remembered it makes the day better for us. So the narrative of what we go through, the things that we're, what we're going through, we tend to remember them in the wake of what we want it to be so that we can feel better about our day today. Therefore, this memory thing becomes important when Jesus said, but remember this. That's why ritual is so important. 
That's why church is so important. That's why it's important to go back home, just to give yourself, if nothing else, a truth test. <laughs> you know how it is. When you go to college the first time, if you've ever gone to college or you went away for a while from your home, about three months, six months out, you start thinking, what a great family. You forget all the conflicts. It's just everything is wonderful. Then you go home for Thanksgiving. And then you go, oh, I remember now. <laughs> because, and I remember the work I need to do. So this ritual is a way to, to center us into the truth of what was and how we got here so that we'll know the truth which will set us free to where we want to be. And Jesus says, you will forget me. And he's talking to his friends right now, to the folk who walk with him every day. And he says, do this in remembrance of me. Do these things so that by that, so that you remember who I really am, what it really cost, and what my real goal was. Because if you don't, the communities around you will define these memories, will take them whole, and will change who I am. And that's what the Gospels are all about. It's, it's, it's about people trying to say the good news into their own community. So John is trying to say something. Luke is trying to say something. Matthew is trying to say something. And it becomes colored by the community around them. Except this one anchor holds them communion table on the night in which Jesus was betrayed. He took bread and he broke it to remind us that whatever the freedom is, whatever this faith is, it did not come because of people who were successful or people who had joy or easy. It came because somebody was broken and broken for you. Because a state arose and destroyed it, it came because injustice will break you, but God will move through injustice. You cannot come to the communion table and hold on to your memory that faith and religion is only about making you feel good and about things that happen. You come to the communion table and remember, broken for you. You cannot come to this table without remember shed for you. The blood, so that even over the years, people like to take faith in church and we try to make it bake sales, which I enjoy. We try to make it t-shirt sales, which I enjoy. We try to make it social justice. But when we come to the communion table, we remember it is about the very salvation of the world. It is about doing something incredible. It is about remembering that God stepped into human history, not to close it down, but to open it up. Now, I'm always, I'm a half through, because this is, and the reason I say that is because I want you to hear the next point importantly. Because we are human beings, and because we are always walking in fear and trying to define ourselves, what happens over time is that memory begins to fall into tribal realities into our families, into what makes us comfortable. Not because we're evil people, we're just people. And so the idea of our faith without an anchor to remind us that our faith is, is literally to blow and to open new doors and to more, have more diversity, without an anchor to tell us that, we become smaller. Therefore, it is no surprise that some people have taken Christianity or their faith in general and made it a marker of only a particular people at a particular time who look like me or act like me if you were a real Christian. If you, in fact, believed like me, there are those who are there and there are those who are there, but you can't come to this table and not remember that the reality is that Jesus died for all that we may all be together. That's what the John text was about. It's not an anti-Semitic text. It's not talking. It's saying that here are people who have a set identity. I am the child of Abraham. And Jesus said, dude, well, I know that. That's a good thing. But it also means that you, your cousins and your friends 
that we're all from the same table. The reason I die, the reason that this table is important is because it enfranchises all of humanity. Our faith, therefore, puts us in the absolute opposition to those who want to take history and bend it into the narrative of supremacy or the narrative of the arrogance that we're better than you. Our faith does not say you're wrong, you're right, but it says we are children of God, and when Jesus died, he died for all of us. Remember, remember this table. Remember what is going on. Remember, this is Jesus. So when you meet the Jesus that happens on the internet sometimes, that says, in fact, that Jesus is a blue-eyed, uh, blonde-haired dude, you can say that might be your Jesus, but that doesn't mean that my Jesus, who has got the fro, is also not Jesus. Or we can say Jesus is a dude from the Middle East, and you're like, no, my, my Jesus is actually from Chicago. Yeah, it's good. We're all both in Jesus. It, but the only thing is not the way he looks, not the way he acts, but the way this table says he was. If your blue-eyed Jesus can allow for my brown Jesus and we can be equal and together at the table, come on, brother, come on, sisters, let's have lunch together. But if your blue-eyed Jesus thinks that he or she is, thinks that he is superior to my Jesus, that's not my Jesus. It's then not the accoutrements of, of symbol. It's the heart of faith. That's why the, the symbols of this table has no, 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 no color. It, it has no kind. It has, it has no face on it. It's rather a cup, and I'm not going to pick it up, and bread. It's life itself. It's wine. It's wheat. It's earth itself. It is, therefore, the transformation of all creation that is about this table. We are entering into Black History Month. We're entering into the place of fighting about history. I am always brokenhearted when I see people try to make history something to fight about and are fearful of. Let's be very clear. We all got atrocities <laughs> that we have to own in our history. The question is, will those atrocities be something we run away with and try to forget? Because remember, memory is about what we forget, not what we remember. Or is it something that we choose to remember so that the narrative that we create today will be different? Shall we raise children that when they make mistakes, we remind them of the table? and say the redemptive God not only forgives you, but now calls you to do something different? Or shall we raise children that we say, don't deal with the truth and then continue with the lie because a lie from one generation becomes worse in the next generation, becomes worse in the next generation and becomes an atrocity in the third generation. This is what this table's about. This is a bulwark against Forgetting, this is a call to remember a bloody, bloody Calvary, a bloody political fight, a bloody pain with the only thing to say is God is involved in the struggle of freedom of every kind. So that when you're going through our personal trouble, <laughs> I want to remember this Jesus. When I'm going through addiction and I'm not perfect, when I'm going through the, the aftermath of the divorce and I'm feeling all kinds of things, when, I, when I'm going through cancer, when I'm going through pain, I can go to the table and remember the God who calls for redemption out of pain and out of suffering by his stripes, I'm healed by the possibilities 
of his love, I am redeemed. And by the power of his witness, I call forth hope. This then is what this table is about. This then is why we will not forget. I'm sorry. Take your hands off my Jesus trying to make him parochial. That's not Jesus. The Jesus of universality. The Jesus who calls us and loves me in my worst state and calls me to be better. Jesus always whispers in you. You don't have to justify how great God is. You just have to believe that God believes that you're greater than you think you are. The only disciple that failed at the table was Judas. And he failed not because Jesus condemned him, but because he didn't believe he could be redeemed. That is what this table is about. That is what this history is about. So there will be those who will say, why do we have women's history? Why do we have black history? Why do we have, because we have all history and they're all a part of us. And the symbols of this table say, in all that struggle, there is Jesus Christ creating new worlds for us, in us, and through us by the power of the Holy Ghost. Remember then, remember, say I will not forget. I'll not forget 1619. I'll not forget Auschwitz. I will not forget the Crusades. I will not forget all the pain of history because in remembering them, I remember a God that redeemed us through it and can redeem us in America right now. Our political sense of disconnect with one another can over be, under, or can over be overcome by our sense of reconnecting spiritually with one another. We are one in the body, not because we are denying our pain, but because of blood and a brokenness binds us in our pain to a better future for us all. In the name of the creator, redeemer, and giver of life, amen. It's time to go get your cup uh, and to go get uh, the things that you prepare for. And in-house, we will also serve you communion also. It's a good thing we bought more than a half a loaf of bread today. Praise God. <laughs> um, the tables of all are welcome. God made the world and called it good. God made the wheat of the fields and the fruit of the vine so that we have made them for food. We come to this table to be fed by Jesus. Jesus said to his followers, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. 
And we give thanks because we depend on the mercy and the power of Jesus. The church is one body, and we share one spirit, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We break one loaf and share one cup because we're all children of the one living God. The table is spread for all those who want to know the presence of Christ and to share the community of God's people. So come, let us feast with Jesus. And now let us do the great prayer of thanksgiving. God be with you and also with you. Lift up our hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to God most high. Let us pray. Eternal God, holy and mighty, this is truly right for us to rejoice in you every place where your glory dwells. You laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens. You made us in your image. You called us in your people and we rejected you in sin. We called to us again and again, inviting us to turn and to worship you alone. Gracious God, loving and forgiving, we thank you for sending your son to live among us, sharing our joy and sorrow and drawing us to you. We told your stories. You, he healed the sick. He was a friend to the sinners. Obeying you, he took up the cross. And while we were sinners, he died for us. Because of your glory, he overcame death and is risen. And he has power to overcome every power which can hurt and divide us. Living God, ever present, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal which we receive. By these gifts of bread and cup, unite us with the living Christ. Hear us, O oh God, as we call and feel your power of love that we may be one in ministry with Jesus and with all believers in every time and every place. Inspire us with the hope that the great day when we will all feast at the great banquet with him and one and no one will be hungry and thirst anymore. Through Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor and praises are yours, eternal God, now and forever. Amen. Now Don will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, before he was to go to Calvary and be crucified, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Oh, now we invite those at home to take your bread and we're going to, and, and your wine, and we will then take communion at home. And then I will serve the folks who are here in the house. So the body of Christ broken for you, please consume the bread. The cup of salvation shed for you, please consume the wine. 
And now as we're serving people in the house, Carolyn will pray and keep in meditative spirit as we go. Shall we come forth? Eternal, gracious, living God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery that in the bread and the cup you've given yourself to us. Grant by this feast we may be restored, renewed, and prepared to go into the world, loving and serving your people. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. As Sister Carolyn continues to him. In the time We now want to continue on. It's hard to continue on. I mean, it was a great, wow, to remind ourselves what a great God we have. What great God. 
who loves us, <laughs> that cares about us and taking care of us, praise God. And all of us, regardless of race, creed, or kind. We're now going to go into the offering time. Uh, please notice that we have two cents an offering, two cents a meal offering, and other offerings also by text, or uh, also you can uh, uh, mail it in to us also. Thank you for giving generously and, uh, and all the ministries that we're doing. We have a busy week. On Wednesday, we have a, a vaccination clinic. It starts at three o'clock. If you can be here, if you can help, two o'clock, we need the help set up. So if you need it by 1.30 or 2 o'clock uh, there. Also, if you don't have any, anyone who have not been vaccinated, please get them here. They, also, booster shots are available. And remember, the kids' shots are now available. Uh, and so we fought very hard to have this time so that we can have kids involved. Uh, so, if, uh, so please uh, get folks to come to this vaccination clinic. Yes, you can go online. And if you can get through the Byzantine Center, but you don't have to. You can walk up and we're cool. If so if you, if, you, if you need a vaccination or you know someone that does, please have them come and do the vaccination. Then the next day, uh, the next day, I think it's the, 20, uh, yeah, the 17th. The 17th, which is the next week, we also are having the, um, uh, a clinic for uh, record expungement. There are certain things that get on a record that should drop off your criminal record. Uh, but it's not happening. So the, the uh, public defender's office, the DA, uh, probation, everyone is coming. Uh, so to help you clean the record, because a lot of people cannot enjoy the life they should be enjoying because there's something on their record and they can't get a job or they can't live places. So we're, uh, this is a wonderful thing. Uh, and it's a clinic, both these things we're gonna do more than once. This is actually our second vaccination. Uh, this is the first time I think the county has done this clinic because we have a new amazing uh, public defender who came from LA, who did this in LA, and he brought this with us. So it'll be in our parking lot, so it'll be spatial. We'll, we'll be separated. So please come, or if you know someone, share that information with them. It's really, really important because they can live a better and different life. And you will notice I am wearing the, the new St. Andrew uh, t-shirt. Actually, it's not new to, newly designed, but it is a new shirt and it's our next fundraiser here. And the quality of, these, of this, oh, you want me to do this? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's got it, he's, he's shooting it, he's shooting it. Um, so the quality of this, this shirt is amazing, y'all. Uh, it really is. And so uh, they're $35 from, uh, uh, until you, uh, they're thirty-five dollars up to XL, and then when you get into my size, <laughs> they got to They always just charge us big people more, right? Thirty-five. <laughs> no, it's a two inches more of, a, of of material, and they charge us dollars more. But anyway, forty dollars. Uh, so thirty-five or forty dollars. That is to support our uh, specifically. We really are supporting our ministry meaning our, um, our, our, our pantry, food pantry ministry. And if you want to come and pick it up here, then on Tuesdays, uh, this will be in the announcement from here on out, on Tuesdays between 1 and 3, come to the office and pick it up. Or on, uh, yeah, Wednesday between 9 and 12, I'll come pick it up. Uh, also, those are the time also if you still need your testing kits. We are on the third order. We've given almost 200 testing kits. They're absolutely free. Uh, this is a way that we stay safe with one another. You can pick those up too. We just asked if you go to pick those up, that you uh, go outside the door, call us, and then she'll put it, because we don't want to put our second, uh, the person who is there, we don't want to put her in, 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 in harm's way. But trust me, people have been picking it up. We're so grateful. We just got a third shipment also. They're still there. Let's just see if we can get it up to 300 folks right now, because we want to make sure that we keep as safe as possible. Uh, also, um, by next week, we'll have the, uh, um, the, the uh, African American or Black History Month celebrations uh, for Marin City. Uh, there is a, mass, uh, a calendar that we all have, 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 have connected to. Uh, that'll be next Sunday. That will be in your bulletin. Talk to Frank. Frank, Frank, Frank Gray is, is uh, spearheading a prayer walk uh, for, I believe, the third Friday. 
uh, for uh, this community. We're, we, we, anybody is there, but we really want men especially there so that the kids get to see uh, folks caring about the community. So everybody can walk and everybody can pray. And your doctor told you to walk anyway. So please talk to Frank to become a part of that. That will be St. Andrew. We'll be sponsoring uh, that walk also. We thank you for being a part of the church and a part of the celebration. Uh, next two Sundays, we'll have special preachers. This month, all of our rest of the month, will be all the, our Black History uh, preachers. They're all female. They're all African-American female, uh, so that we can tell a story. And the last preacher of the month, even though she wants you to know she's not preaching technically, and that's a good thing, because I have a bet with her. If she was, I'd have to sing. It's Jewel. Jewel is making the presentation at the end of the month, who is not preaching, because if she said she was preaching, then I told her I would sing. So thank God you're not preaching, okay? Uh, <laughs> so, but she's, she's, she's doing a special presentation that will be high tech and will show us how old we are. Uh-oh, did I hear you complaining in the background, Jewel? I said I am preaching. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have to work, work with your, uh, I have to work with Sister Carolyn to figure out something that can sing that won't hurt people. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, uh, and, we, <laughs> and we got Margaret who's in the sanctuary saying, go women preachers, go women preachers. Uh, so it's, it's great. Uh, it's a seminary student. And so you'll see that we're spanning the generations. So thank you for being here. Next Sunday, I will not be here, but we have an awesome preacher. Uh, and it's, I, I'm not, and I'm gonna stop the rumors right now. I am not going to the Super Bowl. That's not why I'm not gonna be here, okay? That's not, don't go there, okay? <laughs> um, I think we're ready to, uh, uh, have the affirmation of faith. I want to thank Don, who would write, who did an incredible job as a liturgist this morning. I want to appreciate Carolyn, who's finding amazing uh, music for us this morning, not only for us to sing, but also historical mood, and, and, and of course, Joelle. And I want to thank Margaret Milton, who was as spectacular as usual at the communion table. I really, really appreciate you continuing to give your gifts and, we, and we, we thank you. It's a gift of this house. And we really deeply, deeply excuse me, appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, so let's have the affirmation of faith. I would say all rise. But at home, well, we can buy the two, two people here are rise. I'm telling you, they own their feet. Trust me. Uh, all rise and let's do the affirmation of faith. Say it out loud. The Spirit of the Lord. Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointing me to preach good news to the poor, sending me to proclaim release to the captives and the receiving of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. In the name of the creator, redeemer of life, go forth in this place knowing that you will not forget what our faith is really about. Not defining who's not us, but including everyone as us. Go forth in Jesus' name. Now, please remain standing because we're singing what is called the Negro National Anthem. We're going to sing it to its bitter or wonderful end. This actually predates the actual National Anthem. It is a poem by James Weldon Johnson. Uh, one of my, I am, I'm born from Florida. He is a Florida boy. Uh, James Weldon Johnson. And so we want to sing this hymn, sing it out loud, sing it out long. And it is an amazing, amazing thing. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it every Sunday. But this Sunday, I just want you to know proudly, this is a Florida guy that, that wrote this here. God bless. Let's sing. Lift every voice.
Yeah.